Hi there. Welcome to the Schwoven's Nest. My name is Sandra, and I'm so glad you're here. I love making little decor items for tiered trays. So when I found this wooden bunny at my local dollar store, I thought it would be perfect. I gave it two coats of white chalk paint on both sides, but on the center portion, I used a gray. I found these rubber stamps at Michael's and they were only like $2 for all four of them. And I'm using some black ink and just putting them all over the bunny to make it look like sort of a French country look. I think this turned out absolutely fabulous. I love the look of these stamps. There's two smaller florals, there's one rose, and then a sunflower. And I am in love with these. So I think you're probably going to see me do a little bit more with these rubber stamps in the future. I just use a baby wipe to wipe off my stamps in between when I'm using them, especially when I'm switching over from one stamp to the other. I don't want any of that extra ink to dry on the rubber stamp. After I'm done with them, I clean them properly with a rubber stamp cleaner. I found this really pretty green color of ribbon at the Dollar Tree, so I'm just going to hot glue it all the way around the edges of the rabbit, making sure that it's in the center. And then I'll add a little bow for a necktie underneath his chin. I think he turned out really sweet. Birdhouses are definitely a sure sign of spring. I found this one at my dollar store, so I'm just going to pull off the little perches because I don't need those. So I take some pliers and I just give it a twist and then they usually pop right out. I found some small paper packs at my local dollar store and this one is really pretty green and sort of light green and white and it has a tiny little floral pattern that really looked French country to me. I'm going to use my glue stick and apply this to just the front of the birdhouse and then I'll just paint the rest of the birdhouse with a similar color so it blends in. For this particular birdhouse, I'm only going to use one of the little holes. So I'm going to choose the bottom one and use my craft knife to open up the hole. I didn't have the right green color, so I took a few of the green colors that I have, mixed them together. I also added a little bit of gray to give it more of a sage look. As you can see here, I painted the underside of the roof and the edges green too. I didn't know what I was going to do with the roof at this point, so I just decided to give it a coat of white chalk paint, and then eventually I was hoping that something would come to me, which it did. Since I only covered the front of the birdhouse with that pretty paper, I decided to put some on the roof as well, but I cut it a little smaller so it would not go all the way to the edge. So some of that white could peek through. You'll see me doing that here. So I'm just going to glue it on the top portion of the roof and then fold it over to the other side. And then I'll do the same thing on the bottom portion of the roof. I'm going to trim the paper but leave a little bit of an edge so I can give it more of a rustic look in a minute. Then I added some paper to the bottom portion of the roof too. Using my sanding block I went very carefully against the edges where the paper was hanging over and sanded that and pulled the paper away. It just gave it a really nice rustic look. While I had the sandpaper in hand, I decided to go ahead and rough up all of the corners and edges, bringing out some of that natural wood underneath. I added another little perch. I didn't want to use the original wood, so I just found a little piece of artificial stem from some of my florals, and that worked perfectly. I loved how the green just blended right in with my little birdhouse design. Now comes the fun part, decorating all around the birdhouse. I'm going to add some Spanish moss on the little ledge all the way around it. I'm going to be using my little spatula here to make sure I don't burn my fingers. Anything like moss or ribbons or things like that, you want to make sure that you don't use your fingers. You don't want to burn them because the heat comes through everything really easily. Then I'm going to be adding some little eggs to the sides of the birdhouse and I've got some sweet little florals. These are really fun. They are 
made of little yarn bits so they look like baby's breath they're really pretty I got these in the big box of stuff that my sweet friend Kimberly sent to me a while ago so I thought I would put them to good use For the final touch to my birdhouse, I wanted it to look really nice and rustic. So I cut off a piece of this branch that I've had in my stash. It's really nice and dried out. It was from a tree that we cut down a couple of years ago. So it's had a long time to dry out. So there's no bugs or anything gonna be in that. I hot glued it to the bottom of the birdhouse. And then I also hot glued another little piece of square wood. So the birdhouse would stand up really well. I really love how this birdhouse turned out. I am so excited to be partnering with my sweet friend Linda over at Faith Chick 777's DIY by Design. Linda is one of the YouTube creators that I love to watch while I'm creating. She is so inspiring and her crafts are absolutely beautiful. Her attention to detail is just amazing. When you're done watching my video, I would really appreciate it if you could go down to my description box, click on the link to Linda's video that she did for our Spring Sunshine collab, and make sure you hit that red subscribe button, hit the thumbs up on her videos, and make sure you go back and watch some of her other videos. You are sure to get some beautiful crafting inspiration. I found this sweet little bird at the thrift store for $1.99 and although he's super cute he just does not fit in with the theme of my decor today. So I'm giving him a couple of coats of the Parisian Grey Home Decor Folk Art Chalk Paint. I really love this paint. It does a super job of covering with one coat. Now because this guy is really slippery I think I did do two coats just to make sure I got full coverage. I had this color called Antique Sky from Martha Stewart and it was just really bright. It was a, a greeny blue kind of color, just something that I would never use in my crafting. I was always making something new with it. So I decided to just change the whole bottle. I added some more greens and some grays and that's what I'm using here to stipple on the little bird. I'm using this Craft Smart brush that I got at Michael's and it's a really rough brush. It's kind of like a chip brush but it's nice and round so it's really easy to get a nice texture. So I'm just pouncing up and down and I'm not even pouncing in all of the areas. I just want this green to kind of show up every once in a while. Once the green was completely dry, I'm going to do the same thing with white paint. I'm not going to go all over the bird, but I just want it to have some little white speckling just to highlight it a little bit more. And I think he turned out really pretty. Thank you so much to all of my current subscribers and my viewers. If you are new to my channel and you like what you see so far, perhaps you're even coming over from Linda's channel, I would really love it if you could hit that red button too and support the growth of my channel. If you've been following me on my channel, you probably saw the video where I made over this sort of little buffalo check pattern. I decided that I didn't like it because I did it on an angle and it was a diamond pattern. So I'm going to cover this up with that same sort of sagey green chalk paint. I thought it would be really cute to add a little fabric pocket to the front of this house. So I'm just using some hot glue and some drop cloth and I'm going to create the little square that I want and then leaving the top open of course so it creates the pocket. I'll just hot glue it right onto the house. When you're working with hot glue and fabric, the fabric does get fairly hot. So make sure you're either using something other than your fingers to place it down or do what I'm doing here. And I'm just kind of tapping with my fingers so I don't actually get too much heat onto my fingertips. I printed out this sweet little butterfly and I'm going to use some Mod Podge to apply it to the little pocket. 
I had to use quite a bit of Mod Podge and really use some pressure with my fingers to hold it in place until the glue had a chance to set onto the fabric. Then I added some more Mod Podge to the top of the butterfly, going over onto the drop cloth fabric just a little bit. This will ensure that the butterfly stays put. To add a little bit more of a French country feel, I'm just going to hot glue a little shoestring lace bow right on top of the butterfly. And then I'm just going to add a few little white lavender florals and I think this turned out really pretty. Stay tuned for the other side of the sign. When I'm making little signs for tiered trays, it just makes sense to have them double sided. So this is the other side of my little house sign and it has a gray background. I printed off this design on regular printer paper and I'm going to cut it just about an eighth of an inch smaller so some of that gray paint peeks out. Using a glue stick is the best way to prevent any bubbles or wrinkles. So I'm going to make sure that I get all of the edges really well to make sure that this is going to stick. To make the paper look a little bit more rustic, I'm using the same Parisian gray chalk paint and a little chip brush just to drag across and make it look like this paper is really nice and old. Then I'm gonna take a little bit of sandpaper and rough up the edges of the paper to make them look a little bit older too. To fill in that sort of open space at the peak of the house, I'm using this little butterfly rubber stamp and I'm going to put it on a little bit of an angle and I'm not pressing down really hard all the way because I want it to look a little faded. For this next little double-sided sign, I'm starting off by putting some glue on the back of one of these artist panels that you can get from the Dollar Tree. This one is the four and a half inch square. Now I'm just going to glue on this little printable that I got and I'm just making sure that I have all of the edges down the way I want them and then I'll just press it in place. Using the sanding block in a downward motion will get rid of all of the excess paper and will also leave it with a nice vintage feel. The other side of these artist panels have a really nice frame. I painted it with white chalk paint and now I'm going to add in this beautiful vintage bunny family printable. All of the printables that are available today in this video will be on my website. That link is down in my description box. I have a section of this little picket fence that I got at Michael's many years ago and I've been using lots of it in my projects. I'm just going to pull out these little pieces, cut down a couple of them to a smaller size and then I'm going to hot glue it all along the front of the frame. I glued them onto this little coffee stir stick so they'd be a little bit more steady and then I painted the stir stick white to match the pickets. I thought it would be really sweet to add some of this little greenery in behind the picket fence, making sure not to cover up any of those sweet little bunnies. Then I took a little bit of a pick from the Dollar Tree and took off some of those little purpley pinky flowers that kind of look like lavender and added those in too. I forgot how much I enjoy making these little decor pieces for tiered trays. I usually sell them as a bundle, but for now I don't have an extra tiered tray, so I'll probably be doing a video on that in the near future. This time for distressing, I used a little bit of burnt umber to keep in with more of that vintage sepia kind of tone, which is more of a brown than a black. To make this look a little bit more French country or shabby chic, I'm going to create a tiny little messy bow that I'm going to glue on top of the sign so you can see it from both sides. I really love how this sign turned out. Thank you. 
I truly hope you enjoyed my take on some spring tear tray DIY decor and got some inspiration to maybe create a few of these littles for yourself. Don't forget to go down to my description box and click on the link to Linda's video and her channel. You're not going to want to miss out. If you are enjoying the content that I put out on my channel, I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future content. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.